Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by. A bit of an unusual video, but you're going to see more of these coming up. This is my new Conqueror UEV, Urban Exploring, Explorer Vehicle, Urban Explorer Vehicle, 490. The designation 490 uh, dictates the, the form of the actual van. There's 440s, 310s, 375s, 345s, all different sizes of Conqueror vans and campers. Now this one's new to me, only had it for a few weeks. I haven't had a chance to really get out and put it through its paces yet. Had a camp on the way home after picking it up from Queensland. Lots and lots and lots of videos coming on this, including you know full walkthrough, off-road tests, uh, we're going to do mods, full solar system, you know, full lithium battery setup. Haven't decided which way I'm going on that yet. And just lots of mods and, and testing and playing and, and tips. Now, getting around to the tips, this is what this is. You have one of these or one of the Conquerors. This may appear on other Conqueror models. It might appear on the 440 and stuff like that. Maybe even the 14s, etc. What we're looking at today is the town water feed point on the back of the UEV 490. And we're going to show you how that works. Stick around. So we're just at the back having a look at this, what we're calling the town water feed point. So if you've had a caravan before, typically your town water feed point would have been, like if your sink is at the front of the caravan, you would have had what just looks like a normal hose connection at the front sticking down somewhere. You would literally connect your hose to the town water or your camp water, your site water, whatever, plug it in and then turn off your water pump so you're not using water off your tanks, you're just drawing straight from the site. And I found this up in the corner and I didn't know what it was and I put a thing up on the Conqueror forum and just asked people what they knew it was. Grant, thank you Grant, uh, come back and said, look, it's a, it's, a, it's a town water feed point, site water feed point, whatever you want to call it. The, the water equivalent of shore power. I have tested it and can confirm that that's what it is. It is a town water feed point. The normal feed point for the water for the tanks is down here by the wheel. Yours might be on either side. I've heard of them being on both sides. But when you have water and pressured water connected to this feed point here, um, you don't need to have your pump on. So you just turn your pump off and all your water comes from here. Same as if you were drawing from your tanks. Obviously, if you feel the need to have filters, etc., on it, you want to have a pre-filter on this. And a lot of people do. So what you're going to need is this part here. Now where I scored this one from was the bottom just of a, you know, squirt gun that I would normally connect the hose to for, you know, watering the garden, for example. So I pinched that one. Now the thread isn't quite right for fitting into that thing up there. It is a brass connection that it goes into, so I may eventually grab myself a brass fitting. And ultimately this connection here that's on the end for your hose is going to be whatever you want on the other end. You need this size fitting here. To give you a look at what I got from Bunnings, it's a 12 mil American sprinkler adapter. The reason I went with these two different ones, they both say 12 mil, which is the connection or the hose size it's gonna connect on here. That's with reference to the diameter of the hose here um, and what's gonna fit on there. They were both in the same section, but you can see they're about the same diameter, but the thread is quite a bit different. Now this one's a bit of coarser thread, this one's a finer thread. They appear to be about the same diameter. So, this being a South African variant of the Conqueror, I wasn't sure what that thread was. All I knew was the one that I pinched off the bottom of my gun wasn't screwing in real well. I've grabbed both of those and I'm just gonna jump up and we're just gonna try them and see what happens. So this is our feed point here. And what you'll find is this cap is screwed into this larger one. Once you remove this, I thought this whole, I've turned and turned and turned and turned and turned this. And of course that doesn't disconnect. You use that for threading this piece in there. What you need to do is remove this smaller cap from inside that larger one. And use two hands. I will tell you that, I will tell you that this is a bit of a shit fitting. So I actually needed to get some uh, pliers onto this so I could undo this. I don't know whether this has ever been used. 
on the forum there was doubts as to whether this was genuine or not and i don't know i, I have seen it um or i did see uh i think it was actually grant who had one on his uh, it was located in a different position but it looked to be the same mechanism and you'll find in here this is actually a brass thread in here so i am wondering whether the brass threaded ones at bunnings might be better so i just wanted to try both of these so you can see that's okay that's gone past that point that is a nice fit that's much better than i was able to get the other one in and subsequently was getting leaks I'll just try this one this one's more akin to the other one i think yeah and that's about as far as that one goes in so unfortunately i can't tell you the difference between these this one was the odd one out i can tell you that all the other ones in the box appeared to be the same as this and i will show you the the sticker in just a second or i'll put it up on the screen there but if you have the option of the two that top one is the one you want which is a coarser thread so you see that that actually screwed in there nicely probably a little bit of um tape on that would be nice now what i did mean to look for was just a little cap to go on the end of this so i could leave this in this configuration rather than having to you know unplug this all the time you can see you know once you get this mechanism you can just use this to lock it down but it's a really hard it's hard to get your hands in here and certainly if you want to get pliers on this part you know to tighten this up and then trying to get your hands behind here it just becomes a bit of a nuisance if i'm honest quite the nuisance that's a i will say it's a shit mechanism which is why i'm inclined to try and make this connection here with this piece and then leave it in so i'm not you know pulling it in and undoing it and that seems like a nice fit again i might stick some tape on that put some water pressure on it and we'll just see whether that holds huh? I was also putting, thinking of just putting a small hose on it and just leaving the small hose connected so I can just, you know, um, connect up to it. So that's a nice solid connection. You might meet this little bloke as well. Now, I'm sure all of you remember Titan. I know many of you did. Um, unfortunately, Titan had to be put down a little while ago. Um, now, I didn't have any intentions of getting a new little friend, uh, but this little fella came up and needed, I wouldn't say be rescued, but um, he was in a situation that he needed to be taken out of, um, and he just needed somebody to love him, basically. So he's been with me for 24 hours. This is Sonny. Um, I think we're gonna call him Rabbit, though. Um, and we're just getting to know each other and today's been a really good day for us. So we've been to the park, uh, we've been out and he just, I think he's realised I'm his people. Um, I'm not sure whether we're keeping him yet at this stage. I hate saying that in front of him all the time. But so far, he seems to be fitting in. So you might see more of Sunny in future videos. Turn this on. You can see everything here is leaking. This thing's as old as Jesus, basically. And we have pressure, and we don't have any leaking. You're gonna get the full tour of this thing as soon as I get the Pajero back and I can get it out. But as you can probably hear, I've been crook as a dog again, still, and it's just really knocking me about. Have a shower. Now the pump, now this is a hot shower. We've got hot water and everything here. Won't work obviously off the tanks unless the pump inside is on. But since we're now connected up to town water, we should be able to turn her on. And there's our water. It obviously, it parts and spits a little bit when you first turn it on, because uh, there's usually a bit of air in the line. Plenty of pressure coming out that. I don't have the town water, I don't have the house connection turned right up, um, and I don't have the tap turned up on the shower either. I can confirm and have tested that it does go through the Webasto hot water system as well. Now, I did find when I had it running off the Webasto hot water system, there's the hot water system there. And we're going to do a flush on that. We're going to clean all the coolant out. We're going to try and give it a bit of a service. So that video obviously to come as well. I'm going to go over it from top to bottom, try and make some improvements. We'll make some mods. We'll do some servicing, all of the above.
So consider this kind of your introduction, uh, but big, big in-depth walkthrough uh, to come. So bottom line is that connection at the back, up the top there, or it may be further down. If you've got one of those, it's your town water connection. Uh, that small piece screw unscrews from the big piece. Uh, and then you get one of those connections like I showed you. I think, yeah, three bucks, something like that. I might go back and have a look at the thread on the brass one and then swap that plastic one out for the brass one. As much as I know something's probably gonna wanna jump in that, I'm inclined just to leave that like that without screwing that cap back on. But I just don't feel like getting the pliers out to tighten it, loosen it, tighten it, loosen it every time I wanna use it. That said, it is realistically gonna be very, very, very rare that I would wanna hook that up to town water. Um, it's, this is an off-grid setup for me and we'll be building it as such. Lithium batteries, uh, as much solar as we can fit on top, yeah, you know, all that stuff. Really, I probably should take it out, just throw that in a drawer somewhere, throw it in the van, <coughs> and then just put up with it and suck it up when I need to. But if this is something that you need to do regularly, you're a caravan campsite type person, and <coughs> to be honest, if you've got one of these, you're probably not. As much as occasionally you might, you know, stop at campsites and caravan sites and stuff like that because you need somewhere to go. But if you're buying one of these, probably not your gig you're buying this to get away and be off-site and be off-grid and be away from everybody which is why i got it i want this thing to go anywhere and by all reports they're more than capable of doing it so, so i've got all this stuff here this is all like the canvas awnings and stuff here tent pegs this is another sink that comes out the front which won't be going back in but for resale and original resale value we picked that up Point, but oh, and we've got a McHitch, McHitch Ultra Glide, Alt, Uni Glide, whatever it is, uh, to go on the front. There's just a Treg Hitch on the on the front at the moment. Um, I don't want to make this video too long because you haven't seen this van yet, and I don't really want to spoil too much. But just wanted to throw this video out so you've got an idea of what's coming up uh, with this van. I'm going to spend lots and lots of time on it, and as I discover these different things, which I've already found a heap of stuff. I'll throw up just these short videos and have a look at it. And hopefully it helps out the community uh, and some interest to the viewers as well. So that's it. Thanks very much for stopping by. That's the town feed uh, water inlet on the back of the UEV 490. I believe that might also appear on the 440s as well. But you'll have to figure that one out for yourself. If you see that thing, that's what it's for. That's how you use it. Thanks very much for stopping by. We'll catch you on the next one.